But many experts argue it's not enough to adapt to the changing weather. Global warming itself, not just its symptoms, needs to be tackled head on. To reduce the heat island effect, we need green buildings, rooftop gardens, tree-lined streets, open space, walking paths, biking lanes, smart growth, and public transport. These are measures that can reduce the heat island effect and promote the practices and technologies we need for climate stabilization. For cities like Paris, these are major changes and take time and money. Still, growing numbers like Patrick Pelou are not willing to wait. He lost his job in a Paris hospital for being too outspoken. It's not something he regrets. Je suis très mobilisé parce que je crois vraiment que cette catastrophe qui est arrivée dans l'un des pays les plus riches de la planète euh, n'est rien comparé à ce qui nous attend avec le réchauffement climatique. Ce qui veut dire que si un pays riche comme la France n'est pas capable de donner un exemple d'adaptation de moyens pour euh, protéger sa population en cas de catastrophe, ça voudra dire quoi dans les pays qui ont euh, des économies euh, nulles ou des systèmes sanitaires qui sont catastrophiques. Thousands of miles away across the Atlantic, Chicago in America's Midwest seems to be one of the cities taking the lead in tackling climate change. Famous these days for being the hometown of President Barack Obama, the third largest city in the United States is carving out an unlikely new reputation as a leader in the fight back against climate change. And this is how the city is doing it. Green roofs. It is being transformed into a skyline of gardens like this, which absorb less sunshine and heat, and as a result, use less energy to keep cool. There are already 7 million square feet of green roofs in Chicago, more than any other city in the United States. And this is just the beginning. I hope someday to see every roof here in the downtown area all green. Longtime mayor Richard Daly was inspired to build Chicago's first green roof on top of his city hall office after a visit to Germany in the late 1990s, where he saw how Europe was beginning to adapt to climate change. Chicago is known for all the large buildings and, and, and uh, flat roofs. So what you do is, when you build this, a green roof, it basically helps you as the owner of the building. It reduces your air conditioning and heating costs. Besides that, it really helps the environment, the quality of air. At the same time, it brings nature back here. We have beehives, we have birds, we have grasshoppers, all the things that people have said, well, you cannot have in an urban area like ours. Chicago has compiled statistics which prove that the mayor's ambitions are not just a fashionable whim. They are the city's best hope of tackling climate change. 70% of our emissions is around buildings and energy use. We have very clear research that demonstrates that green roofs has a dramatic impact on cooling. The green roof here on City Hall saves energy costs of anywhere from 8 to 11% a year for City Hall. Uh, if you look at that difference on a 74 degree overcast day and it's 80 degrees hotter on a black tar roof next door, imagine you know, millions of square feet of green roof across the city and how much cooling that can provide not only for the individual buildings but for the city as a whole. For Chicago's elderly, this approach to climate change is literally a lifesaver. In 1995, a week-long heat wave led to more than 600 heat-related deaths as temperatures soared to record highs. Most victims were the elderly poor living in the heart of the city, unable to afford air conditioning. I think the weather got up to like about uh, over 100 degrees, and I had never uh, encountered 100 degree weather before then. And um, I got extremely hot because I had to wait outside in the sun and I couldn't breathe. She survived, but others didn't. My friend lost her life. She was a, a friend that go to my church. She lost her life because uh, she didn't have air conditioning and she had no fan. And when we got to her house, uh, they found that, that she was no longer with us. I had no idea that anything like that could happen. In the wake of the heat wave, 
the city put into place a sophisticated monitoring and heat wave response system. At its heart, a program to contact 30,000 registered people like Lucille to warn them of imminent temperature rise. Its nerve center, the round-the-clock incidents room at the city's Office of Emergency Management and Communication. Instead of people calling into the emergency phone number, what this does is actually the emergency number dials out and we can contact tens of thousands of people at a time and alert them to something specific. In the case of a heat emergency, the mayor may record a message telling them that we're expecting this kind of weather, telling them the services the city provides to care for people in that time, and other indicators to take care of themselves. But Chicago has even bolder goals. By 2020, the city is aiming to reduce its CO2 emissions by 25% below its 1990 level. And it's working from the ground up, literally. It has started to use permeable asphalt and concrete on its roads and pavements. Water will be able to flow through paving stones during storms and not block sewers. The city is also building more parks and green spaces, breaking up relentless heat-creating stretches of asphalt. And it's amazing what can take place when, when you get the employer, we get the government and everyone together, you can really change the course of the environment. You don't have to wait for a huge uh, international meeting to tell us what to do. Most mayors are way ahead of this. Despite Mayor Daly's optimism, the signs are only a truly global approach will dramatically reduce the impact of climate change. The World Health Organization says it's already taking a significant toll, causing 150,000 deaths in 2000. And it claims the number will rise in the future. Saya harapkan uh, kepada negara maju yang mempunyai peran besar di dalam terjadinya climate change untuk menyadari uh, betapa pentingnya mengatasi hal-hal yang timbul terutama di bidang kesehatan oleh karena climate change. Siapa yang mempunyai peran yang besar, dia juga harus mempunyai peran yang besar juga untuk memperbaiki keadaan begitu. For the millions of people on the ground already affected, the politics are academic. In Indonesia, they're struggling now with a surge in diseases like dengue. But one patient at least seems to be out of danger. Rosalinda Manurung is beginning to show signs of recovery. Her doctor, Caroline Mars, didn't know if she would make it. But Rosalinda has been lucky. Sampai dengan saat ini kami merawat Rosalinda dalam kondisi yang semakin membaik dan kami melihat dari tanda-tanda hasil dari laboratorium dan uh, terjadi peningkatan daripada trombosit dan uh, juga tanda-tanda uh, daripada gejala-gejala panas dan mual-mual muntah itu sudah tidak ada lagi dan tentunya kami harapkan kondisi semakin membaik dan kemungkinan besok uh, kalau keadaan membaik Rosalinda bisa pulang kembali. It has been a traumatic 10 days for Rosalinda and her mother. Ngeri, capek, pengen pulang gitu. Kalau dia udah makan ya, minum, saya senang. Gitu. Waspada. Waspadalah saya sama anak-anak saya supaya jangan ada lagi demam berdarah adik-adiknya. Itu aja, Mas. For Dr. Caroline Mars, who increasingly spends her days dealing with dengue, that's not enough. The whole city has to be on its guard in the battle against the disease. Sehingga diharapkan partisipasi seluruh masyarakat, partisipasi seluruh masyarakat untuk memperhatikan dan sama-sama kita care untuk penyakit demam berdarah ini. As long as there are mosquitoes left in Jakarta, the fight to control dengue cannot be won. For the experts, that means just one solution. Kalau nyamuknya dihilangkan, dimatikan nyamuk dewasanya, maka mereka-mereka yang sakit ini kemudian eh, tidak ada lagi nyamuk yang menularkan virus yang dari badannya ke, ke tempat orang lain. Gitu. Itu akan jadi eh, eh, penderita akan hilang dengan sendirinya. In Jakarta, they are just facing up to the fight back against climate change and the growing threat of disease. Similar battles are already being fought in other cities around the world, 
as infectious disease, flooding and heat waves extend their grip over the millions of people who live in them. Grassroots projects, worlds apart, with one shared aim, to make life better for their local communities. Your vote really can have an impact. To vote, go to theworldchallenge.co.uk. Back for its fifth inspirational year, World Challenge 2009, in association with Shell.